And Jenny, here's just another look at the large crowds currently here at the Morelos Dam Gaps. And in addition to the buses here at Yuma International Airport, masks are no longer required. So why do all of these migrants come here instead of the official port? Well, that's because Title 42 closed the ports of entry across the entire southern border. Thanks out of the latest developments in the Econo Lodge hotel murder trial. Mayor Nichols also says he's worried about a negative perception Yuma may be getting due to activity at the wall. Oh, I don't have a mask. I can't get on the bus. Mariah Arzola, a frequent YCAT rider, is thankful that forgetting to bring her mask will no longer be a problem. Once I got COVID and I'm out so vaccinated, so it's no use to me. YCAT Transit Director Shelly Krieger says the news is also a relief for bus drivers who had to enforce the mask mandate. Nothing major, but we have had to call the cops a few different times for passengers not wearing their mask and refusing to. And in addition to the buses here at Yuma International Airport, masks are no longer required. And the airport director tells me the majority of travelers she has seen are deciding to travel without their masks. Probably about 20% are wearing masks. I think right now today everybody's pretty cautious, um, but at the same time they're very relieved. Brown added some passengers were confused as the mask mandate ended abruptly Monday, just a week after the federal government announced an extension. She encourages travelers to stay flexible should the guidance change again. So we're just here to follow and I explain that to people all the time. We're just trying to do our best. All major U.S. airlines have dropped mask requirements on board their flights. Reporting in Yuma, Adam Klett, News 11. Developing tonight, the fight over Title 42. After a federal court judge issued a temporary restraining order following a lawsuit by more than 20 states, including Arizona. But will Title 42 still expire on May 23rd? And why do some immigration experts believe it is contributing to the record apprehension numbers we're currently seeing? Our Adam Clapp joining us live from the border wall near Yuma with more on the ruling and what it all means for us locally. Adam. Good evening, Jenny. This group of migrants at the Morelos Dam is still here. A majority of them have told me that they come from Cuba and a bus is apparently coming right now to pick them up and take them to Border Patrol headquarters. But as for the recent debate around Title 42, a federal judge ruling that the Department of Homeland Security cannot begin to phase out the policy ahead of its expiration date on May 23rd. And that news comes as Republican-led states, as well as a growing number of Democrats are asking for the CDC and the Biden administration to reconsider their decision to stop enforcing Title 42 at the southern border. But for now, its end date is still May 23rd, but this battle in court is far from finished. It remains yet to be seen whether the judge would prevent the CDC and the administration from lifting Title 42 altogether. Immigration lawyer Eric Welsh says the battle over Title 42 is heating up as the health policy that has expelled over 1.8 million would-be asylum seekers, according to Customs and Border Protection, is set to expire in under a month. U.S. District Judge Robert Summerhays in Louisiana blocking officials from ending the policy before May 23rd. For now, despite the pressure from Republicans and Arizona's two Democratic U.S. Senators, the policy is still set to expire in May. And when the CDC, which is a body of scientists, has decided that it's no longer necessary in the interest of public health, um, I'm not sure how a federal judge could compel the CDC or the administration to keep the policy in place. While states like Arizona fight to keep Title 42, other immigration experts are weighing in, saying the policy itself is bad, contributing to the record number of apprehensions at the southern border. Thanks to Title 42, the rate of repeat encounters is the highest it's been in 20 years. That rate is 49% for fiscal year 2022, revealed in court documents from Arizona's lawsuit against the CDC meaning half of all migrants expelled under Title 42 cross right back into the United States, which Reichlin Melnick says further strains border law enforcement resources as opposed to regular immigration law as the repeat encounter rate for migrants expelled under Title 8 is 20% lower. And over the last two years, there have been over 900,000 repeat encounters of the same person caught crossing the border on their second, third, fourth, fifth, or even higher attempt. One of those migrants is Lionel Deras from El Salvador. I met him in a Mexicali shelter in March. 
He told me he had illegally crossed in the United States multiple times. I've crossed through Algodones to Yuma, and the last time I came through Mexicali, and I've been deported these past two times. And where I'm standing right now is just a mile from the Andrade port of entry. So why do all of these migrants come here instead of the official port? Well, that's because Title 42 closed the ports of entry across the entire southern border to asylum seekers. So in order to make their asylum claims, migrants get pushed to crossing hotspots like this one at the Morello Dam and then have to seek out Border Patrol to begin that process. Reporting at the border wall in the Yuma sector, Adam Klett, News 11.